Rodgers easily going to his right. Blake one tackle to the 20, to the 15, cuts in at the 10, the 5, touchdown! Go Blue 1992, Michigan, drive for five. The 1992 edition of the University of Michigan football team faced great challenges and great opportunities. They could win their fifth consecutive Big Ten title. They could break their record for consecutive conference victories. They could contend for a national championship. They would play in the 1,000th game in Michigan football history, and individual records were well within reach for a number of players. But most important was the continued dominance of the Big Ten conference. Before the quest for their fifth straight Big Ten title could be addressed, the Wolverines had non-conference business to attend to. First would be Notre Dame in South Bend. In an emotion-packed Notre Dame Stadium, the Irish took an early lead as Reggie Brooks scored from 20 yards out. Notre Dame was playing in their second game while it was Michigan's opening. First game mistakes hurt the Wolverines early, but Notre Dame was not running away to hide either. The hard-hitting Wolverine defense was forcing the Irish into their own mistakes. Meyer calls the signal, gives it to Brooks. Here's the oh, reverse. It's handled by Miller and Michigan uh, returns. Big break there, Frank. Big break. Finally, with under three minutes to play in the first half, the Michigan offense clicks into gear. They move the ball smartly against the Irish, and with under a minute to play before the intermission, they strike. Michigan puts three receivers wide. Wheatley the only setback, and here's your back to throw. He's going to fire to Wheatley. Left flat. He's got it. Breaks the tackle at the 25. Down the He's side gone. Ten, He's five. gone. Tyrone Wheatley with a touchdown on the swing pass from Elvis Kerbach. In the second half, Michigan continues to dominate. It's the defense that has taken up the charge, and they continually harass the Irish. And finally, another Notre Dame turnover. Bettis coughs it up. Michigan's Morrison gets the loose ball. Now the Wolverine offense must make good on the opportunity, and they don't take long. It's a fake to Wheatley, and back goes Elvis. He's going deep, close corner route. Alexander open at the goal line. Right. He's got it as Jerry said, and Michigan is up to The 17-7 Michigan lead holds through the fourth quarter, but a disputed interference call on a third down pass against Michigan freshman Ty Law hands the Irish a gift touchdown on a platter. They take advantage of the gift, and Michigan's lead is narrowed to 17-14. The Irish then get another break as the Wolverines turn it over in their own territory. The Michigan defense holds them to just five yards, but a field goal by the Irish ties the game at 17. Sadly, that's how the game ends. The Wolverines know they're the better team, but fate doesn't smile on Michigan this day, and the disappointment is tough to contain. It's just one of those first game. You know, you can't really explain everything. Uh, not everything goes your way. You know, somebody's just not in the right position. You know, they're just a little bit out of position, and, you know, plays just don't go your way. I mean, I don't know. I, I'll wait and watch the film, but I'm sure, you know, we could have done a couple more things to win the game. I mean, I'm disappointed, of course. I mean, you don't want to, you know, you don't want a tie. You want to win. You don't play for a tie. But, uh, you know, we got to live with it and just get better next week. Carrying their disappointment over Notre Dame into their second game against Oklahoma State, Michigan started slowly. It was the Wolverine defense that held the Cowboys in check in the first quarter. They managed just 10 total yards in the first 15 minutes. Finally in the second quarter, the Michigan offense shook off their lethargy. With backup quarterback Todd Cowan subbing for the injured Elvis Gerbeck, the Wolverines went to their quick strike attack. One-on-one -on -one coverage for Derek Alexander, split left. And Collins is going to throw that way, slant route, touchdown! Oh. Here's a play action, fake the power. Collins going back, hit as he throws deep. Alexander open on the post, touchdown! Oh. Michigan carried a 14-0 halftime lead into the locker room, and in the second half, they got back to business on both sides of the ball. The defense had taken the running game away, and with the Cowboys forced to throw, the Wolverine pass rush began pounding away. 
Fourth down, Dominic the throw is Porter, and he is trapped back near midfield. On offense, the dormant running game began coming to life and keyed by Ricky Powers, the route was on. We're on a wing left, handoff Powers up the middle. He scores through breaking top. He's got another 15, 10, 5. He's in at the 2 and goes in. Touchdown. Cross sweep, Powers around the right side from the 5, trying to get outside. He turns the corner, he's in. Touchdown, oh. Michigan. Oklahoma State was buried 35-3. Collins set a Michigan record with 29 completions in a single game. Powers and Alexander had each scored twice, and more importantly, Michigan had won their first game of the season and erased the memory of the tie with Notre Dame. We felt all along, you know, we were a better team than they were, and, you know, you know, teams are going to hit some big plays, but, you know, you got to suck it up and you have to go back after it. The defense dictates the offense, and that's what they gave us a whole lot was the pass because they tried to load up on our run a whole lot, and they did a lot of crazy things to try to take our running game away. But in the second half, we did get some things generated with the uh, run offense. I was thinking about it all week. You know, I was ho hoping that we'd win. Yeah, I knew we'd win, but you know, things turned out pretty well. I, I could have played better, but uh, you know, I'm happy with the outcome. Houston was next on Michigan's hit parade. The Cougars came to Ann Arbor with their vaunted run-and-shoot offense running in full gear. They fully expected to score big against Michigan. They were mistaken. Instead of scoring big, they found themselves in a big hole thanks to Tyrone Wheatley on the opening play of the game. High end over end kick. Wheatley will grab it back on the two in the left corner. Heads up the sideline to the 15, 20, over the 30. Look out, he is gone. Wheatley is to midfield, and Tyrone Wheatley is taking the opening kickoff and running it back. 98 yards for a Michigan touchdown. The Wolverine defense took the cue from Wheatley and forced the Cougars run and shoot to fire blank. In the first half alone, the Michigan defense sacked Houston quarterbacks twice. Drop the throw, he's in trouble, he is tackled at the two by Buster Stanley. They forced passes under pressure four times. And Douglas in trouble, running around back at his own 35, chased by Stanley, puts it up for grabs, a one-hand attempt for an interception by Cornflakes, Brown, he can't hold it. And picked off two passes. Klingler rolling right to throw, stops, goes back to his left, his hip throws against the play, tipped and intercepted by Shante Peoples. Houston was in a firestorm of pressure and had no way of getting out. In the meantime, the Michigan offense behind Collins making his second start for Gerback was in total control. The Wolverines scored an incredible 35 points in the second quarter. Collins hit Tony McGee, his tight end for a pair of touchdowns. Collins hit freshman Mercury Hayes for another score. But the play that buried the visiting Cougars was Derek Alexander's gem on the reverse. Third and three. Here comes the reverse. The handoff to Alexander going right. Looking for a block. Can't get it. Hit at the 30. Keeps his balance. Breaks the tackle. Inside the 20. 15. He's gone. Touchdown on the reverse by Derek Alexander. At the half, Michigan led 42 to nothing, and the final would be an incredible 61 to 7. Michigan totally dominated as eight different Wolverines scored. Two different quarterbacks fired touchdown strikes, and three different quarterbacks played. As a matter of fact, just about everyone that dressed played, and Houston went home licking their wounds. It was very clear, Michigan was ready for the Big Ten Wars that followed. Uh, we got a tough opponent, obviously, next week. Then we got the guys from up north after that, but uh, we got right here. Last time Iowa come in here, we got our butts beat, guys. We'll always remember that. We will always remember that. Iowa would be the first obstacle in Michigan's drive for five, but the Hawkeyes weren't an obstacle for long. Elvis Gerback was back from his injury, and the Michigan offense was in high gear from the opening gun. In their first possession, the Wolverines ripped off 59 yards in seven plays. Gerback was three for three through the air, and four running plays split the drive up nicely. And Bernie Leggett did the honors from a yard out. It was 7-0 Michigan. On their second possession, the Wolverines went 80 yards in five plays. Gerback only went to the air once, but he hit it good for 23 yards to Tony McGee. 
The rest of the drive was handled by the offensive line and Tyrone Wheatley. Wheatley took advantage of massive holes for three carries, accounting for 56 yards. On the final 29 yards of the drive, Wheatley went the distance, and after nine minutes were gone in the first quarter, Iowa was looking up from a 14 to nothing hole. It wasn't just the offense that was having fun, though. The Wolverine defense was having their own kind of day. Hawkeye quarterback Jim Hartleaf had precious little time to throw when he went back to pass, and the running game was non-existent. The Michigan defense just shut them down. By the end of the first quarter, it was a 21-0 Michigan lead. By the end of the half, it was a 31-6 Wolverine lead. Wheatley had already scored twice, and it was party time in Ann Arbor. When the second half began, most folks were just waiting to see what the final lopsided score would be when Michigan gave them more fireworks to keep their interest alive. First, it was the defense. And here's Huntley to throw under pressure from Hutchinson, gets it away. People for the diving interception and bring the tight end break. Allen Cross at the 18-yard line. On the very next play, it was the offense. Max is split. Foster and Wheatley hand off Wheatley going up. Breaks through. Look out! 30, 35. Breaks the tackle to the middle of the field. 40, 50. He's for the 40. 35, 30, 20, 10. 82 yards. It's Tyrone Wheatley. Touchdown, Michigan. Wheatley's run was spectacular indeed. But the show wasn't over yet. With the Wolverines leading 45-28 and the game well in hand, one more exclamation point had to be made, and Shea Foster made it. Foster running back against the grain to the right, uh -oh. takes to the line. Uh -oh. He's in the open, 30, 25. There goes Shea Foster, 50 yards for a touchdown. Line blocks real well, you know. I'm just happy the court, the coach gave me had enough confidence in me to put me in the game, you know, and let me run the play. You know, the line blocked outstanding. It was a big hole. Anybody could have ran through it. Because <laughs> we figured that they would not come up against the run, and we knew if a team didn't do that, we felt we could run. Coach Mo kind of expressed he wanted to get at him early because he knew this was a big open of the Big Ten game and it was going to go down to the wire, and he wanted to get at him real early. So I guess I kind of like took it upon myself. By me being in there, I, got, I wanted to set the tone, and I guess I kind of really set it. Michigan State was the next test for the Wolverines, and once again, a fast start key to big victory. But in this interstate grudge match, it was the Michigan defense that started strong, particularly All-American Chris Hutchinson. Back goes Miller, blitz coming, he is hit from behind and sacked back on the 28-yard line. And here's the screen the Miller wants to set up left, but Chris Hutchinson is all over him in the backfield for a sack, his second of the ball game. From that point on, the offense took the cue from the defense and got it going. Wheatley was the main man in the Wolverines' first scoring drive as he carried four times and picked up 44 yards. And that was all Wheatley needed. The last 10 of those yards gave Michigan a 7-0 lead. Jesse Johnson joined in the offensive parade in the second quarter, going over from three yards out to make it 14-0. But the special teams then joined the party against the Spartans, and Derek Alexander was the guest of honor. A high short punt. Derek Alexander grabs it on the 21, goes to his right, finds the seat. 35, 40 to his left. He gets past Solani to midfield. He's off for the races. Derek Alexander will go all the way. The Wolverines rolled out to a 28-3 halftime lead, and the drive for five straight titles was still on track. The second half of this one was just an exercise. Both teams traded scores for a 35-10 final in favor of Michigan, but the final blow to the Spartans came on a patented Wheatley explosion. Wheatley and Foster in the eye, hand off Tyrell, picks his way left, got a seam, down to the 10th, breaks the tackle, he is in, touchdown! It was a you know a tough, uh, hard-fought game, and uh, it came down to the trenches. And we just dominated up front. Our offensive line just dominated their defensive front. And you know they got kind of frustrated at there at the end. And they there was a couple fights here and there, but they, they couldn't take it up front. And we just dominated there, and uh, that's the way we won the game. That was definitely a dog fight. Uh, there's no doubt about it. It was it was a tough. I mean they weren't given an inch, and uh, anything we got, I mean we definitely deserved. We had to run the ball and uh, run hard. After four straight home games, the Wolverines looked forward to going on the road 
and they had to be focused because they were going to Bloomington, Indiana and beat the Hoosiers of Bill Mallory. While the game didn't have a tremendous buildup, the Wolverines were heavily favored. In the minds of the Michigan youngsters, it was bigger than most people knew. You see, the last Big Ten road game Michigan lost was in Bloomington. No, Michigan was not taking this one lightly. And while they spotted the Hoosiers a 3-0 lead in the early going, the rest of the first half was a very maze and blue day. With just under three minutes to play in the first quarter, the Wolverines went to the air to erase the Indiana lead. Jay Foster to the right of Wheatley, and back goes Gerback. Lost it up, left corner, Alexander open. He's got it, touchdown, Michigan. Into the second quarter they went, and Indiana must have wished that they hadn't because the Wolverines were in a blitzing mood, and Indiana would feel the heat from an awfully good team on the loose. In their first possession of the second quarter, Michigan moved 56 yards in five plays with Wheatley doing the honors with an assist from Gerbach. Screen to Wheatley, right side, got blockers to the 20, 15, 10, 5, and he jogs in for the touchdown. The offense was clearly geared up, but the defense wasn't taking the day off. They got after the Hoosiers and Steve Morrison caused this fumble that Cole and Brown picked up, and the Wolverine offense had good field position again. Michigan made no mistake with the opportunity as it took Wheatley just one play to put the Hoosiers in an even deeper hole. Counter play, Wheatley coming right, first throw and a great move, 40, 35, 30, hit by Damon Watts, he pulls away at the 10 and goes in for the touchdown. What a run by Tyrone Wheatley. On the very next Indiana possession, the Wolverine defense came up big again, causing another fumble, and Marcus Walker recovered this one. Michigan turned that turnover into a three-point field goal and a 24-3 lead. But the big fireworks were still to come. The defense was swarming all over the Hoosiers, and a Chris Hutchinson sack inside the two-minute mark forced the Hoosiers to punt from their own goal line. They did, and Michigan looked like they'd have great field position. Only one problem, though. Michigan was detected for holding on the play, and the Hoosiers elected to take the 10-yard penalty and get 10 more yards of field position. It was a mistake, because on the second punt, Derek Alexander made the Hoosiers pay. Here's the snap, a little high, the Julio pulls it down and kicks it away, a low one. Derek's going to run it back from the 30. He's up to the 35, he's to the 36, breaks out to the left, looks for a block, cuts up to the 40, 45, he's into the open 40, 35, 30, there he goes. Derek Alexander for the second straight week, goes for a touchdown. Alexander's second punt return jam in as many games, but an exclamation point on this one as the Wolverines roll 31-3. I think they over pursued a little bit to the right side and you know I cut it back to the left and it was like no one out there I had a couple blockers in front of me some good blocking so you know that enabled me to go all the way. It's fun it's fun to win but uh, you know we got uh, five, four or five more games to go we get through the Big Ten and go to Rose Bowl. That's what our uh, defense is about team you know some guy makes a mistake the other guys that to pick them up you know because everyone knows they're going to make a mistake every now and then so um, we just want to help each other out. When you have your defense out there playing hard like they did, um, and they get us a turnover like that, you almost have to owe it to them to come back with a play like that because the guys go out there and they work very hard. With records now within their grasp, the Wolverines return home for an emotional homecoming game against Minnesota. Not only were they just two games away from tying the conference consecutive win mark, Michigan was playing in the 1,000th game in their history. It was a big game indeed, and it was a totally dominant Michigan team that came out to celebrate the historic day. On their first possession, it was Gerbach going up top to get the route underway. Here's a fake to Wheatley. Gerbach looking left to throw, and he's going to go deep. Derek Alexander breaking open. He's got it at the 10 and will walk into the end zone for a touchdown. Minnesota tied it up on the following kickoff with an 83-yard touchdown return. And while the Wolverines started fast, the Gophers had stolen some of their thunder with a big play of their own. The only difference was that Michigan had a whole lot more big plays in their arsenal than the Gophers. And it didn't take long for Gerback and Alexander to come up with an encore. And Gerback's going to throw. Blitz coming. Michigan picks it up. Elvis lofts it up. Left corner of the end zone. Alexander's open. Touchdown. But the duo of Gerback to Alexander weren't done yet. 
Believe it or not, there was still a minute and a half left in the first quarter when they went at it again. Alexander Schlotreich, Jesse Johnson, the only setback, Elvis to throw. He is hit by the blitzing linebacker. He delivers the football right corner of the end zone for a touchdown to Derek Alexander. It was 21-7 at the end of one, but Michigan's defense decided they wanted to get in on the fun, and it was an unlikely defender who made the big play. Lewis puts to the right, Douglas left with Garrison, and back goes Fleetwood, he dumps it over the middle, intercepted by Nita Bagakon. He runs it back to midfield and is tripped up at the goal for 47 by Antonio Carter. Oh, I thought about it, but I didn't, never thought it would happen to me. If I had some blockers, I think I would have scored a touchdown. From the air to the ground, Minnesota didn't have an answer for the Wolverines on this day because following Aga Khan's interception, the ground game warmed up. The tight end McGee coming in motion right to left. Draw play, Wheatley running on five, nobody there. One for the touchdown goes Tyrone Wheatley. The 28-7 lead would have been enough for some clubs at halftime, but not Michigan. Not in this historic game. With 6.40 to play in the half, Michigan was 80 yards away from Pater. In seven plays, they covered those 80 yards, and Eddie Davis made the final 24 his own. Gets the handoff left side. Big hole! Davis gets through to the 15, back to his right, breaks the tackle, 10, 5, and he is indeed gone! 24 yards for a touchdown! It was a 35-7 first-half explosion that had the Gophers reeling. But the explosion wasn't over in the second half. A familiar tandem of Wolverines teamed up again for their record fourth TD aerial of the day. Third down and five at the Gopher 32. Elvis to throw, blitz coming, fires quickly. Alexander, middle screen, got it. Cutting to his left, 25 to the 20. Turns the corner, 15, 10, great block by Walter Smith to turn Derek Alexander loose into the end zone for a Michigan touchdown. And that is a record breaker. I didn't know that. I don't, I don't really know what to say. <laughs> that, uh, I mean, that, that was a big game for me, and, uh, you know, finding that out <laughs> makes it even better. <laughs> but the day wasn't done. Wide receiver Walter Smith had seen his teammate Alexander score four from Gerback, and Smith decided it was his turn to make a little magic of his own. Jesse Johnson, the only back, gets the toss, hands it to Smith out of reverse, he's in trouble. Capella's got him back on his own 40, but he breaks that tackle, reverses his field, he breaks loose at the 50, 45, 40, back to his right at the 30, he might go all the way to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, what a touchdown run by Walter Smith, unbelievable. The Wolverines would add two more touchdowns on the day, one from Wheatley and one from Che Foster. When Minnesota finally left Ann Arbor, they had absorbed a 63-13 drubbing. It was total, it was complete. Michigan's 1,000th game was an historic success. Believe me, there's one thing I want you to know. That was a much bigger win than you thought. And, it, and it, the things that we did made it a little easier for us. But that was, and I told you before, that was a, a, a big one. And it was one that we had to get under our belt, okay? There's a lot of things we have to do yet, and we're not going to get happy. Michigan now headed to West Lafayette in a date with Purdue's Boilermakers. The Wolverines were confident, riding high after their big win over Minnesota. But Purdue was laying in wait, preparing one of their best efforts of the season. And Michigan's character would be tested in a hostile and upset-minded environment. After one quarter of play in West Lafayette, Purdue had shocked everyone. They were leading 10-0. Michigan had under five minutes of possession time in the first quarter. Purdue had the ball more than 10 minutes. It was not a typical Michigan performance. Finally, in the second quarter, the Wolverines looked as though they were beginning to awaken. Third down, it's a screen. Dan Walter Smith cross, he has it. He's in the clear at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. It's a touchdown for Walter Smith on a screen pass to the middle of the field. Trailing now 10-7, surely this would start the engine, and Michigan would storm back to roll over the upstart Boilermakers. Wrong. Purdue would answer the Michigan touchdown with a score of their own, and at the half, Michigan was in danger of seeing their drive to a fifth title, seeing their run to a record-winning streak, end on a cold day in Indiana. With the pressure on, the Wolverines looked within themselves during the break and stormed out of the locker room to retake control of their own destiny. On their opening possession, they needed a big play. They got it from Derek Alexander. 
Cross to Johnson, reverse to Smith. Double reverse to Alexander, back around the right. 45 breaks the tackle, 50. Derrick's in the open, 45, 40. Now he is hit and hauled down inside the 30, spun out of bounds at the 25 by Jimmy Young. The determined Wolverines used that play to move closer to crawling back in the game. And it was Indiana native Tony McGee who got them all the way back. Three wideouts in the ball game. Tumor right. Smith and Alexander left. Here's Elvis to throw. Rifles it in the end zone. Touchdown to Tony McGee. The tight end in traffic down the middle. Now the Wolverines trailed by just three. The defense must respond. They did. On Purdue's next possession, Michigan forced them into three plays and out. The ball was coming back to the Wolves with a chance to take the lead. Pater was 76 yards away, but it got closer after Jesse Johnson took control. Jesse Johnson, the only setback, breaks through on the right side, 35, 40, he breaks into the open, 50, 45, 40, he takes from behind, they've got the angle on the house cap, and he is hauled down at the Purdue 24 yard line by Pat Johnson, the safety. What a run by Jesse Johnson for 49 yards. A few plays later, Johnson would complete the drive going in from three yards out and giving the Wolverines their first lead of the game at 21-17. But the third quarter retention wasn't over. On the ensuing kickoff following Johnson's touchdown, Purdue muffed a pooch kick and Michigan's Dwayne Ware recovered. The Wolverines parlayed that break into a Pete Elizabeth field goal and the 17-point third quarter explosion had turned a 17-7 deficit into a 24-17 Michigan lead. The fourth quarter belonged to the Wolverine defense. Purdue had moved the ball well in the first half, but the determined Wolverine defenders shut the Boilermakers down in the second half. In the final 15 minutes, they pushed to the Michigan 27, only to be shut down without scoring a point. On another occasion, they moved to the Wolverine 44, but they would get no further as the Michigan defense forced the Boilers backwards. And then in the closing minutes, Purdue was moving again. They had pushed the ball to the Wolverine 31. It was time for the defense to dig in again. And team MVP Chris Hutchinson finally put Purdue away. Out of the shotgun. Gets the snap, drops the throw. Hutchinson breaks through and sacks him on the 44. Big play. I just kept looking over to the sideline, looking over to the sideline, you know, seeing what kind of stunt we were going to do. And finally he just goes, it's all you. You got to suck it up. And I was, I was tired, to say the least. And uh, we just persevered up front, and uh, someone was looking out for us. For the rest of the season, it's a good thing to happen right now. You know, we, we went four quarters, we, we know we can play four quarters, so I think it's a good thing. You know, maybe we came out a little flat, and uh, they, they came out uh, high, and, uh, you know, things were just going that way. They had the momentum. You know, we just had to come back in and regroup. And we could just feel it. And I mean, even a couple of their players said, man, you all, you all opened up some very big holes. So we had emotion because uh, we wanted to do something that was, we wanted to make a, we wanted to set a precedent by winning the 18th game, you know, 18th Big Ten championships. And uh, we needed this victory in the worst way if we want to win another Big Ten championship and go to the Rose Bowl. That's our ultimate goal. The Purdue victory tied the all-time record for consecutive conference wins as Michigan broke new ground in the record books. Elvis Gerback had broken Jim Harbaugh's record with his 20th game of 150 or more yards passing, and there was more territory to cover in the upcoming weeks. Northwestern would provide the next test, and the Wildcats, who had complained earlier in the week that Michigan's no-huddle offense was bordering on the illegal, felt the wrath of an aroused bunch of Wolverines. Three plays into their first drive, the Wildcats coughed it up on a fumble. Corwin Brown was there to get it, and three plays later, Michigan made Northwestern pay dearly for the turnover. And back goes Elvis to throw for the first time. Looking left, now going deep down the middle. Alexander breaks open on the post, goes up in the end zone. He's got it for a touchdown behind Willie Lindsay. On Michigan's next possession, it was a similar story. The big play in this drive was another pass, but Gerback picked a different receiver. Back goes Elvis, he fakes the draw to Wheatley, looks down the middle and fires on a crossing route to a Monty Tumor. And the freshman's got her at the 40, breaks one tackle, now pulls Good. away from two more players to the 40, 30, Good. 25, the 20, the 15, and he is tripped up on a touchdown saving effort by Willie Lindsay, the short side cornerback at the 15 yard line. The 65-yard run and catch got Michigan in position, and Tyrone Wheatley finished it off with a 14-yard touchdown scamper on the next play. Another three-play drive, another TD, and Michigan had a 14-0 lead. 
Northwestern would score on their next possession to make it an interesting 14-7 game. But it wasn't interesting for very long, because in the first play after the kickoff, Gerback and Alexander were at it again. There's a fake to Wheatley, and back goes Elvis. Deep on the post, Alexander is open. He's got it at the 10, the 5, and he's in. Touchdown. Just like that. So after Michigan's first three possessions, the book on the Wolverine offense read this way. Seven snaps, 159 yards of total offense, and three touchdowns. In the second quarter, the route continued. The Wildcats helped Michigan with a bad snap from punt formation, and the Wolverines tacked down a safety. Just before the half ended, Gerback went to Alexander again, this time from two yards out. And after 30 minutes of action, Michigan had a dominant 30-7 lead, and the all-time mark for consecutive Big Ten victories was 30 minutes away from falling. While the offense had been brilliant, the Wolverine defense wasn't taking a back seat. No, they were making life fairly miserable for the Wildcats. Back to throw Len Williams, Hutchinson, and Dyson converge, and they've got a sack way back on the 44-yard line of Northwestern. Four defensive look, Martin Davis blitzing, and so is Morrison. The handoff to Lundy, and Morrison's got him for a loss back on the 46. Here comes right in motion, and back goes Williams. Here comes Dyson around the corner, and down he goes on the 15. By the time this one was over, Northwestern could manage just eight yards rushing. Just eight yards on the ground. It was an incredible performance, and the consecutive conference victories mark was shattered. The final, Michigan 40, Northwestern 7. I mean, you know, it's remarkable because, you know, I never really imagined it coming here. And, you know, ever since I've been here, I've been a champion. You know, they say those who stay will be champions. And, you know, it's come true. I'm a champion five years in a row. It's special. It's Michigan. I have five rings now. And all the fifth-year seniors that I came in with, we have five rings. And that's something, uh, after we got our second one, we just only dreamed about. And, you know, it's a dream come true. The Wolverines were riding the crest of record-breaking emotions when they entertained Illinois in Game 10 of the season. A win or a tie would wrap up their fifth straight Big Ten title, and the Wolverines started fast against the Illini. Second and 13, go back to throw, looking left, screen to Wheatley, he's got it. Gets a block from Lugette, and Steen in front, down to the 40, puts two men, 35-30, down the sideline goes Wheatley, takes out a man at the 10, shrugs off the tackle and goes in for a touchdown. The 7-0 lead looked as though it was the beginning of another round, but all of a sudden it came unraveled. In their next five possessions, and that took the game to halftime, Michigan turned it over every time. Incredibly, four fumbles and an interception cost the Wolverines scoring chance after scoring chance. They would put up more than 300 yards of offense in the first 30 minutes, but Michigan would only have a 7-6 lead. In the second half, the rash of turnovers ended but they still affected the Wolverines. Offensively, they were a little tentative, not as freewheeling as in the past, and it took a big play by the defense to turn the tide. And the back goes for Dusko. Four-man rush, he gets rid of it down the middle, juggled and intercepted by Peoples at the 35-yard line. The Wolverine offense then came to life and made good on the Illinois turnover, and it was Jesse Johnson who got the call. They're running Jesse, quick to the right side, he cuts it back left, open five, touchdown! Jesse Johnson, 15 yards, right up the middle! The extra point was missed, and Michigan led 13-6. But the lead lasted only five minutes. Illinois, working against a tiring Wolverine defense, went 69 yards in 13 plays to make it a 13-12 game. But they also missed the extra point, so the Wolverines were still ahead by one precarious point. Into the fourth quarter it went, and the Illini, with their confidence soaring, moved the ball to within field goal range and hit it for three points and a 15-13 lead. An upset was in the making. Michigan, with their backs to the wall, clawed back. Starting at their own 38, the Wolverines put together a drive. The bulk of the work was handled by Jesse Johnson on the ground. But with a drive about to be stalled on a third and nine play, Gerback and Alexander hooked up on a 21-yard pass that kept the hopes of the Wolverines alive. It put them in the red zone, and Johnson finished it up. That's in the eye, and they hand it to Jesse Johnson, coming off the middle. Gets a great block from Tree Jenkins. Is hit at the two, leans out, and goes in. With a little under seven minutes to play, the Wolverine defense would surely close this one out and protect the 1915 Wolverine lead. But Illinois, smelling a huge upset, had other ideas. Jason Verdusco led his charges on a 65-yard drive, and with less than two and a half minutes to play, 
Verdusco took it over himself for the TD and a 22-19 Illinois lead. With the outright Big Ten title and a Rose Bowl berth hanging in the balance, the Michigan offense was now asked to do it again, to put together a pressure-packed drive and rescue this game. Starting from his own 13-yard line, Elvis Gerback answered the challenge. He opened the drive with six straight passes. All six of them were completions. Four different receivers caught the passes. Gerback was marching Michigan down the field. He was using all the weapons at his disposal. He was picking the Illini's prevent defense apart. And on the seventh play of the drive, Gerback crossed Illinois up. He called the draw, and Jesse Johnson did the rest. Second and one at the 34, draw play. Here comes Jesse Johnson, left that room, 30, 25, 20, down the sideline, out of bounds at the 17. As Michigan marched toward the goal line, Illinois finally stiffened on defense. Michigan now faced a fourth down from the Illini 22. A field goal would give Michigan a tie. A tie would lock up a Rose Bowl bid and a fifth straight conference title, an outright title. Gary Muller didn't hesitate. He sent Pete Elizabeth on to attempt the longest field goal of his career. Elliott will snap it. There it is, placed down. Peter's kick is on its way. It's long enough. He made it. Peter Elizabeth. My emotions are really mixed. I mean, I feel good. I feel great that, you know, I hit a field goal like that. It was, you know, I needed to hit something like that just for a confidence booster. And uh, it's important for the team, you know. Everything I can do is what, you know, I'm out there to do the job. And I'm glad, you know, I was able to do it today. And um, it's hard to say, you know, I feel great or good because, you know, we came out with the time. We really wanted to win. And, uh, but, you know, we didn't lose. So that's the most important thing. We really wanted to win, even though we're going to the Rose Bowl. I mean, we're kind of happy and we're kind of sad. Despite the disappointment of the tie, the Wolverines went to their finale against Ohio State with a Rose Bowl locked up and the outright championship safely tucked in the trophy case. Ohio State would be playing for pride, and so would Michigan. There was no luster loss for this game between the Buckeyes and the Wolverines. Ohio State hadn't beaten Michigan in four years, and in the early going, they came out on fire. They moved the ball down the field on the opening possession and were looking to strike first with a field goal when Michigan's special teams rose to the challenge. Jim Borcher sends it back, and the kick is blocked, and he is grabbed by Dwayne Ware back on the 15. He's running to his right, trying to turn the corner. Puts a move on an offensive lineman, gets over the 20, and out to the 23-yard line. Late in the first quarter, Ohio State finally did strike. They got a field goal attempt off and took a 3-0 lead. But the Wolverines wouldn't let the lead stand. They received the Buckeye kickoff and marched toward Pater. Ricky Powers, who was finally recovered from an ankle injury, did most of the work as the Wolverines' running attack started to take over. When Powers wasn't in there, Tyrone Wheatley let the Buckeyes know that it was a multi-talented attack they were facing as he ripped off big yardage. The entire drive was on the ground. Michigan was pounding away at the Buckeyes up front. To finish it off, the Wolverines stayed on the ground, but the ball carrier surprised just about everyone, including the Buckeyes. And Gerback drops the throw. He's going to run the quarterback. Draw, and he's going to get in for a touchdown. Elvis Gerback. The touchdown was costly for Michigan. Gerback was hurt on the play and would be lost for the rest of the game. In addition, the extra point was missed, and Michigan led only 6-3. The rest of the first half would be a standoff, with neither team able to break through as the defenses prevailed. In the second half, with Todd Collins in charge of the offense for the injured Gerback, Michigan finally came to terms with a slippery field and a homestanding Ohio State defense. On their second possession of the third quarter, Collins started a drive at his own 20. Mixing the pass with the run, the Wolverines started their march toward the Buckeyes goal line. Collins only went to the air three times during the 12-play drive, but he was perfect on all three passes. And one of them was a key third and nine completion to Imani Toomer that kept the drive alive. Now as Michigan stood on the doorstep, Collins, like Gerback earlier in the game, called his own number for the big play. High formation, the three tight ends, and Collins fakes it to Johnson and runs the naked bootleg for a touchdown around right end. Michigan now enjoyed a 13-3 lead, and they were getting restless in Columbus. But Ohio State was not out, they were just down. On their next possession, they added a field goal to make it a 13-6 game. Then on their next possession, Ohio State started another grinding drive. 
They converted two third and long plays to keep their hopes alive. And with a first and goal from the three-yard line, Michigan's defense rose up. On first down, the Buckeyes were stopped cold. Here's the option play and the handoff to the fullback. Cochran and Shante Peoples is right there with Morrison and Walker and Dion Johnson to stop him. On second down, they were stopped cold. Here's the option look. Herb Street's going to keep it, try to cut up field. He can't make a cut. Matt Dyson was in there, forcing the play. On third down, they lost two yards. Two tight ends in the backs of the eye, Smith and Cochran. They're going to run the option. Herb Street going right. He's in trouble. He's tackled on the five by Marcus Walker and Dion Johnson. Now it was fourth and goal from the five. The game was hanging in the balance. On a great throw and catch, Ohio State broke through on a desperate fourth down play, and they tied the game at 13. That was the way it ended. For the third time in the season and the second week in a row, Michigan had been tied. Still unbeaten and still outright champions, it was a quiet Wolverine locker room in Columbus as the flow of emotions tried to find the difference between accomplishment and expectation. Well, Michigan, we're a team, okay? And uh, we just got to remember that. We'll always be a team. We'll always be a team. These, these dang ties, I don't understand them either. But uh, we have work to do now. We're going to uh, go on to the Rose Bowl. We can be proud of that. The fact that it doesn't make a difference when you play good. If you play good early in the year or at the end of the year. And uh, I just honestly say that I'm very, very disappointed as you are. Okay? But I'm still very proud of you in many, many respects. We just got to get these damn things ironed out. But now we got one thing to do. We all talk about we lived this winter with one thing in the back of our minds. The embarrassment of Pasadena. We aren't going there the way that we wanted to go there, particularly late in the year. Okay? But we played well. We've hung in there in a lot of ways. But we know we got one thing to do. And the whole thing you talked about doing was singing the victors in Pasadena. Sing the victors in Pasadena. We all got to get better. There's some way each and every guy in this room could have done a little bit better. Okay? But yet I think the effort was there. I don't think they had any letdowns. I think the effort was there. We'll keep rolling. We'll keep rolling. You be proud of who you are. Crazy things in life happen. You know, just like whatever you're dealt in life, that's 10% of it. It's 90% of it is how you react. Don't you ever forget that. You're Michigan. You're proud of yourself. Despite the ties late in the year, Michigan was still a national power and was heading to Pasadena and a rematch with Washington. They would take with them the outright Big Ten title. They would take with them Elvis Gerbach's career passing marks for most attempts, completions, yards, touchdowns, efficiency rating, and percentage. Gerbach's 6,000 career yards through the air is only the 12th time anyone's put that number on the board in NCAA history. They would take with them Chris Hutchinson's single season sack record of 11 and all time sack yardage record. They would take with them Tyrone Wheatley, who was named the Big Ten's Offensive Player of the Year. They would take with them records of consecutive Big Ten victories and consecutive Big Ten road victories. But most importantly, they would take with them the stinging memory of Washington's victory in the Rose Bowl of a year earlier. They would take to Pasadena the resolve to avenge that loss and erase that memory. Arriving in Southern California, the Wolverines took the practice field with a purpose. Their workouts were spirited. They were focused on the job at hand. They not only had to pay Washington back, they also felt they had lost some respect following their season-ending ties. In other words, Michigan had plenty of motivation. Well, I think the most motivating factor for the Rose Bowl was the score of last year's game. And the fact that some people, not all people, lost confidence in us. And when you get booed at your own stadium and you haven't won it, lost a game yet, and unfortunately, yes, kids do fumble the ball and you do throw interceptions. Those things are a part of the game. And we've had a lot of injuries. But I, I really believe that that's stuck in the side of this team. And they realize for the first time, you only have 95 players and the team is the most important thing. And I, as an individual, can grow out of this team. 
and uh, that was a motivating factor and we wanted to have the respect of everybody not only from Michigan but in the country but sometimes it hurts when you lose your own fan respect. Michigan entered the Rose Bowl as underdogs to Washington even though they were ranked higher and in the early going they let Washington know the 93 game would be a whole lot different than the 92 game. You're back to throw, gives on a draw to Wheatley, running him up over the 25, going to his left 30, up the sideline to the 40, drag down from behind, out near the 45-yard line. The Wolverines struck first with a field goal, but Washington came right back with a touchdown for a 7-3 lead. But again, Michigan would not let momentum turn. They came right back against the supposed superior Husky defense and hit them up the middle. Ricky Powers in motion left out of the eye. There's a fake to get. Elvis there in the is. middle on a delay. McGee wide open. 25, 20. He is gone. Cody McGee. 48 yards for a touchdown. The big play was just a starter for the Wolverines. There were plenty of big plays yet to come. And Tyrone Wheatley opened Washington's eyes in the second quarter with a display of power and speed they had never seen before. Here's a drop play, and Wheatley's got room. Uh -huh. He's into the open, 45-40, down the near sideline. Howard Cole will never catch him. He's gone. 59 yards, touchdown, Tyrone Wheatley. Wheatley's explosion gave the Wolverines a 17-7 lead. But Washington would storm back. Thanks to a couple of big plays and a very questionable call by an official on a touchdown pass that appeared not to be a touchdown as the receiver dropped the ball before crossing the goal line. Washington left the field at halftime with a 21-17 lead over the Wolverine. Was it the Rose Bowl jinx striking Michigan again? In their history, the Wolverines had been hurt dearly by questionable calls in this stadium, and it had happened again, and given Washington the halftime lead. But this time around, Michigan would not leave the outcome in the hands of the officials. They had enough guns, and more importantly, they had enough resolve to overcome any adversity thrown their way. This Michigan team would not be denied. I think we did it. We had better preparation for this game, Jim, as a coaching staff, and our players knew it. But the main thing in the whole thing was the emotion in the game. Even at halftime, our players were not going to go out there and not going to fight. If they were, to, if they were going to beat us yesterday, they were going to have to be some tough customers because we were not going to lay down no matter what happened. Michigan would open the second half with the football, and on the very first play from scrimmage, Wheatley would again let Washington know just how committed he and his team were about this game. Wheatley and Leggett in the backfield, the split eye, power left, counterplay. Wheatley up the middle through a big seam to the 20, 25, 30, splits through the safeties. He may go all the way. 40, 35, 30, the 20, the 10, touchdown, Michigan! A stunned Rose Bowl crowd could only marvel at Wheatley's burst. Washington, on the other hand, couldn't stop him. At that point, Wheatley had cracked a 200-yard mark in rushing. Michigan had also regained the lead 24-21. The Huskies, though, would come right back. They answered Wheatley's trump card with 10 unanswered points. The Wolverines trailed 31-24. It was uncharacteristic of the Wolverine defense to be giving up this many points. But one thing was still in their favor. While Washington quarterback Mark Brunel was making big plays on scrambles and through the air, the Huskies could not run the ball. Highly touted running back Napoleon Kaufman could not dent the Michigan defense. Staying the course and never wavering from their plan to stop the run, the Wolverine defense saw things turn their way as the game moved late into the third quarter. Washington, despite having no success on the ground, kept at it. But they tried once too often as the Wolverines forced Kaufman to fumble deep in their own territory. That was the break Michigan needed. And with the ball in the red zone, guess who got the call? You got Leggett in front of Wheatley in the eye from the left hash mark. Elvis gives it on a delay. Wheatley going to his right. Great one tackle to the 20, to the 15. Cuts in at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Tyrone Wheatley! With the score now tied at 31, it was time for the Michigan defense to shut the door, and they did just that. About midway into the fourth quarter, Washington moved the ball to the Wolverine five-yard line thanks to a couple of penalties again. But the never-say-die Wolverines would deny Washington anymore. Three times they raged at the Wolverines with their powerful option play, and three times they were denied. Then Michigan's defense, 
which had been dented all day and had given up 31 points, would give up no more. Washington was stopped cold. They didn't have an answer to the angry Michigan defense, and as if rewarded for their efforts from the ghosts of Rose Bowl past, Washington would then miss a chip shot field goal. The score stayed tied at 31, and Michigan sensed it was their turn. Redemption was at hand. Elvis Gerback brought the offense out 80 yards away from the goal line. With the game hanging in the balance, Gerback and company went to work. Gerback, who had taken the heat for not performing well in big games, was cool, calm, and in charge as they started the drive. Mixing the ground game and the passing game, Michigan moved the ball. And they did it without the game's most valuable player, Tyrone Wheatley. The Wolverine tailback had back spasms and was sidelined. But Eddie Davis and Ricky Powers were stepping up and delivering. Gerback was 3 of 3 through the air in the drive, and the team was 3 of 3 on third down conversion. And the big play came through the air to tight end Tony McGee. There's a fake to get. Elvis Great going down the middle. McGee open. This is the play. He scored on earlier. This time he's tackled at the 22 of Washington. Into the red zone now and into history. For the showstopper, Gerback went to McGee again. And Elvis throwing gets good protection against the blitz. Fires. It's caught by McGee at the one. Fight to a tackle down to the goal line. Is he in or not? He is. Touchdown, Tony McGee. The 38-31 lead for Michigan was all they needed. The Michigan defense, buoyed by their goal line stand, simply would not let Washington steal this game away. Twice, the Huskies would get the ball in the closing moment. Once after a partially blocked Michigan punt, but they would get nowhere. The Wolverines rose up and stopped Washington. And in the process, they laid to rest any Rose Bowl memories of the past. Michigan's 38-31 win completed a year-long journey of this team, a journey of redemption. The emotions that had been building for over a year spilled out in the afterglow of victory in Pasadena. And you fifth year guys did a hell of a thing out there today. Okay? Very, very special. But we said one thing. And, and you know when you dedicate yourself to something and you, you fall behind and you come back, it's, that's what life's about. The ups and downs, and you gotta believe. Today hopefully you will do that even better. And when you think of, of what happened and how it was done, it was even special, okay? A lot of people had doubts about us. We went in five and we did it. And I think the younger guys learned from us how, how we did it. And, uh, you know, we just kept the tradition. We kept together. No matter what the score was, we were down by a couple points there at one time. We just kept fighting and kept fighting. And uh, it just goes to show the kind of character and uh, kind of quality uh, men we have on this team. No, you could not have written a better script. Not even a blowout. I think this is perfect. I just knew. I mean... I knew we kept it, if we keep it close into the fourth quarter, if we were up by a couple or down by a couple, I knew, I knew we were going to wear them down. It's exactly what we did, and you could just feel it, because we were just torturing them at the end of the game. Well, it feels great. You know, um, Dunn King, Joe Cuso, Everett, Tony McGee, those guys, you know, Coach Les Miles told me one thing. He said those guys are going to work their butts off. And, uh, you know, and when, when a coach tells me that, and, and when you have a look in certain guys' eyes as the offensive lineman, you just, it's almost a moral, you know, dilemma that you owe it to them. You just owe it to them. And they blocked, and they blocked the great up front. We had a great game plan coming into this game, and we can attribute that 100% to our coaches. And the players execute. That last pass, L just put a, a dollar right on me. And, I, you know, I took it to the bank. And, and that's what you're supposed to do. We're seniors. We got to go out and make plays. It's an unbelievable experience to come out here, be the captain of this team, finish off a career like I've had with a win against Washington. It's unbelievable. It doesn't get any better than this. I mean, the pressure was on. We went out there. We kept fighting and coming back. And we got it done for the Roses. And when you look at this team and they made history in setting a record for number of conference championships, and then you're going to let them go out with two ties and a loss, would have been, a, would have been very, very bad. And, and I'm really happy for these seniors because you're right. They, they were starting to lose some respect. And this team battled through a tremendous lot 
number of injuries and adversity, adverse situations that I'm very, very proud of. And of course, to cap it off this way and the way that we did, and probably the greatest game maybe I've been involved in. 1992, Michigan's year to sing the victors in Pasadena. Go Blue 1992, Champions of the West.